There was no bloody murder scene. There was no obvious murder weapon. But Carol and Stephen's deaths were cold and calculated murders carried out by a dangerous man who clearly planned to get away with it. So 9th of April last year, police received a call to two people that had been found deceased, which uh, was Carolyn and Stephen Baxter. When police entered the home, uh, initial thoughts were that this could possibly be a carbon monoxide um, incident where, where it's obviously really unusual that two people would be found deceased at the same time. Uh, initial investigation showed that that was unlikely to be the case. We then needed to send off toxicology after post-mortems to understand uh, how Carol and Stephen had died. And it was when those toxicology reports came back that showed that they both had uh, fatal doses of fentanyl in their system. In any investigation such as this, we've got two people that have died in, in mysterious circumstances. So officers conducted significant amount of inquiries on Mersey Island to understand uh, who knew Carol and Stephen and who had had access to their home. It was at this point that Luke DeWitt became uh, a suspect. It was identified that he stood to benefit from the will. Uh, he was also had access to the address and was in the area at the time. And for those reasons, Luke DeWitt was arrested on suspicion of murdering Carol and Stephen. Luke, the reason we're here today is um, I'm going to have to arrest you, um, and that's on suspicion of murder. All right, as part of a police investigation, you've been identified as being a suspect in relation to the deaths of Caroline and Stephen Baxter, 27th to 9th of April, 2023, all right? Okay. We identified that one of DeWitt's family members had been prescribed fentanyl patches, which can be used as a painkiller. It were these fentanyl patches that were used to kill Carol and Stephen Baxter. We believe that DeWitt placed these fentanyl patches in drinks that he made for Carol and Stephen on the day that they died. Through CCTV and ring doorbell footage, we were able to show that DeWitt left the property later that day, only to return later on, we believe, to try and cover his tracks. Despite having opportunities to do so during the weekend, DeWitt didn't check on Carol and Stephen. Unfortunately, that culminated on Sunday when their daughter found them deceased. DeWitt quickly arrived on scene that day and took over the 999 call that the daughter had made. Hi, I'm, I'm Luke, I'm, I'm a friend. They're just right. over. Okay, right. Are you with the patient now? They are there. Right. How many people require help, just to confirm? He even went on to give a really comprehensive false account to officers at the scene, which was captured on body worn video. So I literally ran from home to, to here to come check. Okay. And just as I got here, they just smashed the back window to get in. To get in. Okay, fair enough. During the investigation, we identified that Luke DeWitt had created uh, numerous personas, all completely fictional, over 20. And these personas he used to, uh, to control Carol and Stephen Baxter uh, into believing that they were ill uh, and, and ultimately were used on the, the final day, we believe, uh, that led to their death. So one of the personas that DeWitt created uh, was a doctor in America and uh, this doctor would have conversations with Carol about the illnesses she had and would give her advice. The doctor even introduced other patients to Carol and all of these people were personas that DeWitt had uh, created himself in order to uh, maintain that control. Hi Carol, it's Jelly, it's Jenny. Hi Carol, it's Jenny, it's Cheryl's sister. Yes, oh, it's so nice to finally speak to you after all these messages we've been doing. We uh, identified that a will had been created which DeWitt stood to benefit from. Investigation showed that this will was fake and indeed another persona that DeWitt had created was a solicitor who was involved in uh, constructing this will. After DeWitt's arrest, we conducted thorough searches. One of those searches uncovered a bag which had fentanyl patches in, 
also empty pill capsules and metal tacks. We believe that one of these tacks was placed inside a pill capsule at some point previously and given to Carol. This resulted in her hospitalisation where the tack was found during an x-ray. We identified that DeWitt had downloaded an iHeart camera on his mobile device. He then used another phone to place in the kitchen of the Baxter's house. And we have shown through phone evidence that this device was effectively spying on Carol and Stephen and DeWitt was watching them die. We now know DeWitt lied and deceived everyone he met. Those lies and deceptions carried on through the trial. He disgracefully tried to blame Stephen Baxter for the creation of the personas that we now know DeWitt did himself. In all my years in policing, Luke DeWitt is one of the most dangerous men I have ever come across. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind, had he not been caught, he would have gone on to commit further murders.